In this, the third video in the series on cute development on the beagle bone, I'm going to demonstrate and explain my working example that should illustrate how you can use cute as a framework for embedded system development under Linux, where you need a user interface and you also need to access the GPIOs and local buses. The last video explained how you set up Qt Creator and use it to build applications. The video before that discussed and reviewed the use of the LCD 4 cape that can be attached to the BeagleBone. Both of these videos are linked here and I'll link to them again at the end of the video. So first off I want to discuss my hardware setup. I've used very similar configurations before and explained them in detail in previous videos. For example, the LED circuit I use here is discussed in detail in the BeagleBone GPIO video and the I2C circuit is discussed in the BeagleBone I2C tutorial. However, to be complete, I've presented the wirings that I've used in this setup. First is the LED. It's driven through a transistor as the forward current for this LED is 30 milliamps, which is too high to be sourced from one of the GPIO pins. The LED is powered by the 5 volt pin, which is pin 7 on the P9 header, and grounded on pin 45 of the same header. The GPIO I use is GPIO 0 underscore 7, which is pin 42 on the P9 header. The input to the base of the transistor is fed through a 10K resistor, so only a very small current needs to be supplied from pin 42 in order to turn on the transistor. When the transistor is turned on, a large 30 milliamp current flows through the 100 ohm current limiting resistor and across the collector emitter of the transistor and then to ground. Pin 7 and pin 45 can source and sync much larger currents than the GPIO pins. You can see the way that I connected the cables to the BeagleBone header. It's not ideal, but I don't have a breakout cape that would allow me to do this more neatly. Anyway, it works, but just be careful if you follow this route that you don't accidentally short two pins on the header by piercing one of your connecting cables with another pin. For the I2C circuit, I'm using the BMA180 accelerometer that comes on a breakout board from SparkFun. This board is very easy to use as it has 3.3 voltage levels and we're able to select either I2C or SPI. I'm using pins 19 and 20 on the P9 header for I2C2 underscore SCL, which is the clock for the I2C2 bus, and I2C2 underscore SDA, which is the data line for the I2C2 bus. You can see here in the figure the actual connections that I have used. So that's the physical circuit and the LCD4 cake from Circuit Co is then placed on top. If you want to download the source code for the next part, it's available from GitHub. At the Linux prompt, simply type git clone git colon slash slash github.com slash Derek Malloy slash BeagleBone QT with QT in capitals. And this will create a local copy of the source code. If you're using Windows or Mac, you can install a git client. There you will find all of the C++ code and all of the QT configuration files. So here's the final application that I've developed. I'm using the LCD4 board from Circuit Co. It's sitting on the BeagleBone and I'm using embedded Qt or Qt depending on whichever way you prefer it. I've linked this environment through the GPIOs to one LED. This is a standard uh, LED. It has a forward current of 20 milliamps and for that reason I'm using a transistor to drive the LED to ensure I keep the GPIO pins on the BeagleBone safe. Separately, I'm using the I2C bus and I have a small board here on which I've installed a BMA180 accelerometer and I've also installed a, a, a gyroscope. Now, I'm only using the, the accelerometer for this example. I just didn't want to take away the wiring for the uh, gyroscope. So the, the, the accelerometer is, measures the position with respect to gravity. So effectively, it gives you the angle of rotation with respect to the well, to gravity with the normal to the surface of the earth. Uh, so using this, I've built an application. If you like, this is an input device. It sends devices into the BeagleBone. And this is an output indicator. So I've just done input and output just to give an example. So I've got my Qt application up and running. And you can see that it works very well. I can do things like this. I can press LED on and the LED comes on. Press LED off and the LED goes off. So I have a touchscreen setup and I have my outputs working through QT to my GPIOs. So I can press, I can do it with my finger, LED on, obviously it's harder, LED off. Uh, and that works very well, so it means that 
we can have that could be driving a relay to do something much more significant. Um, you can see here this is my indicators of my pitch and roll. They're set from minus 90 to plus 90, minus 90 to plus 90 for the pitch and roll. And I also have a separate pitch level indicator here, just numerical values being displayed using QT standard components. And you can see as I start to rotate the um, the accelerometer, you can see that I'm rotating it about 40 something degrees. Yeah, that's the roll, so roll is in this direction. Well, I've configured it that way, it's up to you to decide. That's roll in that direction. You can see the slider going back and forth and the angle changing accordingly. And pitch is in this direction, so I'm pitching forward or pitching in reverse, okay? So the pitch, and I can see if I, if I put it on its edge, it's almost 90 degrees, okay? It's getting, well, it's getting close to 90 degrees if I, if I play with it. So that's my accelerometer. It's, it's set up on the, on the little breadboard and it works very well through I squared C. Um, there are some nice features about this. One is that in order to read the values from the accelerometer, I'm using um, a Q timer within QT. So it's a, it's, it's a treaded timer. And so some, after so many milliseconds, depending on what you write in your code, I have a, a setup that makes a call out to the accelerometer to get the latest value and then to do something with that value. So the signals and slot structure is used with the treads as well to update or to, to know when there's new data available from the accelerometer and to display that data into the indicators and against the sliders uh, and to update the values as we go. So it's quite a nice structure. It's very, it's surprisingly easy to write quite complex operations with Qt in this, in, in this way. Um, we can also make decisions on that. For example, I've put in a little rotating slider here and it allows me to set a rotation level. So I can say at, well, let's make it a bit more challenging. At 60 degrees, I want the LED to come on. So it means that if the pitch is 60 degrees or the roll is 60 degrees, 62 degrees, the LED will come on. So I'm up to 40 something degrees, get close to 60 something degrees. And you can see that at around 60, 60 well, exactly 62 degrees, the LED flashes if I go below and above it. So if I move it past the 62 degrees, the LED will stay on. And the same for the pitch. If I rotate the pitch far enough, you can see the LED comes off and goes on as well. It goes, it goes off and on. Uh, so that, that's my application. It works, it, works, it works surprisingly well and it's very responsive. And I have my touch screen here as well at the same time. So I'm I, I'm happy with the way that it's worked out. I've made the code available on GitHub and put the link in the description of the video and in the video on how to download the code. So you can see the actual code that I've used and also the settings that I have in the project for remote deployment to the BeagleBone. Um, it's based on code that I've written before. So if you need more information about how I've interfaced to the BMA 180, you can see there's a previous video or the way that I've interfaced to the to the LED, you can see there's a previous video. So this is my final source code, and just to run through it in case you haven't seen or you need just an explanation of how it works. This is the user interface, and that's the main window. I have a couple of active, the active components here are the uh, this particular element called the uh, pitch number, it's the, that's the object name. It's an LCD number, uh, widget. Uh, I have a similar one called the roll number. So the pitch number and roll number are the numbers that appear and they have this kind of LCD effect. I have my LED on, my LED off buttons, my LED auto button. Um, so they're defined. And I have this one which is called my light level dial. And this is my output light level edit. And then these are my two sliders, my roll slider and my pitch slider. The rest of the items are all labels and they're just um, they're not changed by the source code at all. So if we want to see, for example, what happens when the LED goes on, we can just go in here and go to the slot. And we can see the go to the slot when it's clicked. And we can see the effect here is called GPIO set value, this green LED pin high. So that effectively turns off um, the, or sorry, turns on the LED, sets it high, the green LED pin when uh, we, we press the button. This uses GPIO set value, which comes from one of the libraries which I've, I've used in previous videos, which is simple GPIO. Uh, simple GPIO has a set of functions. Um, GPIO 
export on export set direction and mux setup as well so that they're functions that i've made available before and they've come from um, an, another source i've actually built modified it based on work by ridge run okay so back to, back to this window and i'm, I'm gonna the, the ui is there and i'm gonna go through the components there in a second but just to look at this is probably the best thing to do is to go at the main window we've main.cpp is the starting point that just starts up the main window so main window is the important uh, class here so main window is a child of q main window uh, and all i've added is these private slots automatically when the led on is pressed when the led off is clicked when led auto is clicked and when the light dial level is is moved and this is another one that i've created new accelerometer data slot that's a function that's called a slot that's called when the actual timer gets to whatever value we've defined that it needs to check for so after every 100 milliseconds this function is going to be called and um, down here under private i have my main reference for the window my green led pin which will set up in the constructor my accelerometer which is a pointer to my accelerometer which is the class that i've used in previous videos to set up an accelerometer uh, my auto LED state which is whether it's in auto mode or not my Q timer which I construct again within the constructor this is the timer that runs the tread every 100 milliseconds triggering this particular slot and then finally auto LED is just a helper function just to avoid rewriting code over and over again so probably the next thing to go to is the constructor so within main window go to the constructor which is at the top you'll see that I go setup UI, which we have to do to set up the user interface. That's standard Qt. Um, here are the functions that come from simple gpio.h, omax, omap, gpio, omap, mux setup, which sets up this pin, which I've used, which is gpio07, which comes from p9 header pin 42. So that that sets this particular pin up. To, let's sets up the mux so that this is a GPIO, We're using it in gpio mode. Uh, which is uh, mode 7 on the um, on the um, beagle bone so we record this is gpo 7 because it's 0 7 0 times 32 plus 7 is 7 uh, oh yeah i've got it there is 7 uh, gpo export the green led pin so it means that it's it's um, available for out and we send the direction to be output so that's set up this this is our led pin it set it up as a pin that we can write either high or low to as a as a right uh, pin uh, the accelerometer again using the class that i supplied this is the accelerometer bma 180 accelerometer we construct an object of bma accelerometer we tell it that it's on bus 3 i squared c3 and we're using address 40 so i did that in the previous video in the i squared c video i explained how i wrote the class for that uh, these are functions I've added to the accelerometer to set up the bandwidth and to set up the accelerometer range. So again, I covered that in the previous uh, video. Auto LED calls my auto LED helper function below. And auto LED simply says, if it's false, set the state to be false. Uh, and on the status bar, say auto LED disabled. So the status bar is at the bottom if you maximize the window. So that's the constructor. So you can assume at this point that nothing happens after the constructor is called. Uh, but, oh, sorry, I forgot to mention the timer. The other thing we've done is we've created a data timer. And the data timer um, is initialized. Actually, it's, it's defined within the state. If you remember back to main window, we have queue timer, data timer. So there's the data timer object. We're referring directly to the data timer. So here, data, we're saying connect the data timer this data timer signal timeout so this is when this the, the the timer gets to a certain point a certain time when the timeout happens send to the slot relating to this class which is main window and to the slot new accelerometer data slot so what we're saying is the timer after 100 milliseconds when it times out it sends a message to this slot which is in this particular class so it goes to main window and calls the new accelerometer data slot so that's what will be called after 100 milliseconds and continually after that okay and that starts the the timer counting
Uh, so the value we're passing to it is 100 milliseconds. So when that happens, we get a message at new accelerometer data slot. We read all the data from the accelerometer, which is from the class, the BMA180 accelerometer class. We get the pitch and roll using the functions defined here. You can see in, in these come from my accelerometer class to get pitch and get roll. Um, they come from there. Go back to where I was. Oh, I wasn't there. I was in main window, that's CPP. Um, we set the pitch slider and roll slider according to this value. I've had to invert roll just to be intuitive. Um, obviously, you could rotate the rotate the, the, the circuit board around. It just meant the wires would be in my way. So I just inverted the roll. So um, it, there's no big issue there. Uh, pitch string, I'm just displaying the string as pitch and roll, displaying them in the LCD displays, which are the these two displays here. So converting those two values as integers into strings and displaying them there. Uh, go back to where I was. Uh, and then finally, I'm going, this is the auto auto light level. So this is to do it, if I set a light level of 40, if it goes greater than that, then something happens. If it doesn't, then something the opposite happens. So I'm saying here is if the uh, pitch is greater than the dial value or minus the roll to be consistent is greater than the dial value, then turn on the LED, otherwise turn off the LED. So it means that within this function here, we're looping around and checking and turning on and off the LED. Um, okay, that's good. So that works there. And uh, the other thing, the other slot, the off LED button is pressed, the LED goes off and auto LED is false. So I have it that auto LED, which is this state for checking the pitch and roll, goes off if we press the LED on or off. Um, and finally, this is the dial. The if the when the dial, let me see, the dial is called um, light level dial, and that has a slot. So if we go to its slot, uh, which is um, what was this value changed? You can see this is the value change function. So when we rotate that particular slider and it rotates around, we just simply update the value and we read in the stencil data value. And oh, I don't need to do that. Okay, uh, light level dial finished. I'm gonna comment that out. Okay, um, on LED button checked. That's okay, and finally. So that, that's it really. Uh, there isn't too much to that. The important, the important piece there is that you get the handle on uh, cute how it works and how you have signals and slots and, and the way that the uh, code actually works. Okay, so the final thing I want to do with my application is I'm going to show you how debug um, can be used in this application. It's a good example of where you might want to use it. So here I've set up the project so that debug should work. I'm gonna deploy by pressing start debugging at the a debug view so my application started up and you can see my application is running so everything is working as per normal I'm in debug mode and it's using um, my oh, lock it LED on LED off everything's working LED auto and I'm just going to set a level here and move it to LED auto so we can see if I go past 41 or 41 it's uh, switching on so that's that's good so let's let's see what the effect is here because I'm, I have my my treads running. So let's say for example I want to go into my uh, oh I didn't mind to leave that environment. Let's say I go into my main window.cpp and I go down to where a sample takes place. So I want to find out what values am I actually getting back? What real values am I getting back from my accelerometer for the pitch and roll? So to do this I can put in a breakpoint. So let's put in a breakpoint here. So immediately, hopefully, as soon as I put in the breakpoint, yeah, you can see that my code has stopped running. You can see that my my beagle bone is frozen at minus four degrees for pitch and one for roll. And you can see at the same time in the debugger that I've got minus 3.9896 for pitch and minus 1.225 for roll. So if you remember, I'm doing a minus or to convert it to for just to align it. So that means I have a value of 1.2 and four, which is pretty good. I actually, um, it seems to be doing a rounding, which is impressive. So that shows me now what's going on. And it means that I can test it because I can go, well, let's rotate this 
sensor 90 degrees and I can I can run to the next uh, time we meet this breakpoint which should be a hundred milliseconds so straight away you can see that it ran <laughs> my pitch changed to minus three which isn't great um, but that's probably just didn't get time to change because you can see here in the debug environment I'm at 82.88 degrees for pitch Let's see what happens if I run it a few more times yeah okay so it needed that extra rotation uh, iteration sorry so now you can see on my display I have 82 degrees and minus one for roll and that relates my 82.8 and 2.17 so you can see it's working very well um, it gives us a good indication of exactly what's happening and it's a great tool chain because it allows us to full control over what's happening on the beagle bone and in our cute environment um, while at the same time being able to see the actual output in a debug environment. Stop that and you can see that obviously it's it's frozen. I, I have no user interface at all at this point. So to, to run this again we'd have to get rid of the uh, breakpoint and we can just, well I can run it in debug mode again. And it's off, it goes again and now it's working away again. So everything's working and let's restart it. Oh, auto mode. Okay, so that's that. Um, up here you see I have a um, an LDR. I was planning to use the ADCs, but as I mentioned in the previous video, I couldn't get the ADCs working at the same time as the touch interface. If I go in to try and manipulate the value of my ADCs, you'll see that the screen freezes. So if I go into cd slash sys slash devices platform omap tsc here are my analog inputs and I have this LDR connected to my AIN6 which shouldn't affect the display so you can see everything is working fine I have my on off on off uh, well on <laughs> off so it's working fine my touch screen is working fine but as soon as I start to read values in from uh, say cat I, 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 N, 6 um, so let's write, read some values in so I think I have it connected to that pin it's, it's consistent anyway I cover it yeah okay it's working so you can see I'm reading values in from my um, AIN6 so I've co uh, covered it if I bring down a light on top of it okay uh, and six Let's see we're getting close to 4907 so my analog input is working fine but as soon as I do this I have no response whatsoever my my beagle bone is working my display is working everything is working but I have no I've lost my um, my stylus it's not working and you can see um, it's clear that the a a a i n 6 is working but it shouldn't clash because the uh, the touch screen is between a a i n 0 and a i n 4 sorry a i n 3 so there should be no clash but it does cause problems so that is it Hopefully you can see how I've used Qt to set up this application and you now have a feel for how you can use Qt to develop a GUI application that allows for full interaction between a touch screen and physical hardware under embedded Linux. If you need to go back to part one or part two of the videos, please do so now. Alternatively, you can go back to the channel to see any other videos in the series.